I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internet where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode of The Treehouse Show, we'll be talking about icon fonts, the flight JavaScript framework, and a new CSS grid. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool blog post from Line25 called How to Create a Simple Collapsing Header Effect. This is a relatively new trend that we've been seeing where the page header or banner would gradually shorten and disappear when you scroll up the page. The main idea is to use a fixed position header and banner and then use a relatively positioned content div below fixed position header and banner divs. The header div is given a higher Z index to make this kind of design possible. You know, this is a really cool trend that we're seeing, you know, here in 2013 or 013, as the kids say. That's right. That is a 2013 design trend. Hashtag 2013 trend. <laughs> Next up, we have a project called Textilate.js. Textilate is a jQuery plugin that lets you apply CSS3 animation to any text. It works via data attributes, so you can use any CSS3 effect that you can think of to make it work. An example that we see on the site is data in effect equals Roland. Um, now, if you're not satisfied by just using the data effects, you can call them programmatically as well via jQuery functions, you know, be it in the header, footer, you know, whatever. Wherever you place the JavaScript, you can just throw in one of these functions and chain them together like you would expect from any jQuery plugin. Pretty cool. Next up is this really cool blog post from Fog Creek called Trello uses an icon font, and so can you. And how? Trello recently converted their icons from a CSS sprite image to an icon font. They save space because icon fonts are smaller, it's easier to style them via CSS, and shadows and gradients can be easily applied. The post on the Trello blog is a walkthrough of how they did it, naming glyphs or letters, applying hints, converting to different formats and loading into browsers. Not every browser supports all font types, so it's necessary to convert them. It's very time consuming to do this, but the payoff is actually pretty huge. Yeah, um, you know, especially switching over from CSS spriting. I mean, I think the thing that I like the most about it is that this is very similar to SVGs in that you can use this to support high resolution displays. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Next up, we have a, another font called Block. Uh, block is just block lettering. So if you don't want to use the lorem ipsum placeholder text, this is a font to display blocks instead of words. Uh, now, this might look, you know, quite a bit better on your screen. You know, maybe people don't want to see the text or are confused by the bits of Latin. So go ahead and use the block font. No, that's, that's a really interesting point because on the one hand, I feel like you should actually use lorem ipsum text because it actually shows you visually what text will look like on the page because text kind of adds a little bit of texture to web pages. But at the same time, you're right. The lorem ipsum text does have a tendency to confuse clients. They think, you know, why is this Latin stuff all over my web page? Yeah, so, this isn't the copy I sent you. Yeah, exactly. So the block font, you know, definitely does a good job of replacing that. Next up is Backstretch. Backstretch is a jQuery plugin. Doing one of those right now. Doing, doing a little backstretch? Yeah. It's a jQuery plugin that allows you to add a dynamically resized, slideshow-capable background image to any page or element. Images are fetched after other content has been loaded, so it, go ahead, it, it goes ahead and helps with load time. This can be useful when designing certain types of sites, such as portfolio sites, for example. And I think the really cool thing about this is that when you go ahead and resize the browser, mm -hmm. you can actually see the background image resize with the page. So it does, you know, all that complicated math for you. So pretty neat. Yeah, I could definitely see a use for that. Definitely. Next up, we have a new JavaScript framework called Flight. Flight is an event-driven web framework from Twitter. 
Now, it's interesting because it's organized around the DOM model and takes a modular approach to organizing behavior so smaller components can be strung together to form an application. Components enforce a strict separation of concerns and they can't be referenced by other components. And components can be attached to elements via the attach to method and functional mix-ins are supported so that behavior isn't clobbered if you decide to write over a different function. Now, this is going to be a really interesting entrant, I think, into the arena of JavaScript frameworks because it is so modular and easily testable. Plus, you know, it's got the backing of Twitter, so it'll be interesting to see where it goes. And Twitter apparently uses this all around their own site. You know, I can really see this uh, taking flight. Oh, that's why they named it that. Yep, huh. exactly. I thought it was something else. Boom. Next up is Unsemantic, which is a new CSS framework that is the successor to the 960 grid system. It works in a similar way, but instead of being a set of columns, it's entirely based on percentages. Wow, that's really cool. Um, something that's actually pretty cool about it, I think, is the author of Unsemantic is the same author as 960GS, so he can legitimately call it the successor to 960GS. And if you're building responsive websites, this would be, you know, a really good framework to whoa, go ahead whoa, and try whoa, and use. Hey, Nikki P, did you just say responsive? I, I did. Hey, 90s web design guy. Jason, theme song. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, heard you talking about responsive stuff. Wanted to let you know that responsive websites is something that we take into account in the Photoshop deep dive. Okay. Photoshop right. deep dive. Allison is our expert teacher. She's been rocking it. Uh, we got the whole thing up there now, including guest appearance by yours truly in the old slices and save for web stage. Uh, need a clip. We got a clip. Got a clip here. Slice like a ninja. I, Cut like a razor blade. I think we can actually play a clip. You don't have to, you don't have to reenact well, the clip. I think Real Player was kind of buffering. You never trust that thing, Jason. All right, so slice like a ninja. Cut like a razor blade. Boom. Careful. All right. <laughs> Clip. If you're creating anything in Photoshop to be used on the web, it's important to think about how they should be properly saved, like what file type they should be and what size they should be. Knowing this type of information will make you much more invaluable as a designer. Did someone say slicing images? Oh, hey, 90s web guy. What's up? What's going on? Well, I thought I heard you talk about slicing up images, and slicing happens to be my specialty. So, really? do you want some help? Or? That'd be great. All right, all right, cool, cool. So, the only way to get a button with rounded corners is to design it in Photoshop first, right? And then you slice like a ninja, cut like a razor blade, and then you put them back together with a table, right? So, you got your left side, your right side, put them on either side of a table cell where the button label goes. Now, it's super tricky because the rounded images match the background color of the middle cell. That's where the, the label is. What? No, no, what am I no, doing? no, no, What? No. We don't really do it like that anymore. Huh? No. With, with improvements in CSS, many graphics that we used to have to slice up in, like a razor blade yeah. can now entirely be created in code. So instead of all those extra images, we can just declare a border radius of, let's say, five pixels and be done with it. Entirely in code. That's crazy talk. I all right. Know. So there it is, right? Photoshop deep dive coming at you. It's all out there. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty Me, cool. Me, I'm thinking in the future I, I might do a deep dive. Could be Lotus Notes, or it could be this new thing, mobile technology. Perhaps you've heard of it. Maybe the future. We've got the old Palm right here that I'm rocking. I think you mean the Palm Five? Two, uh, five, Nick. One color on this, not five. Let's not go crazy, okay? All right. Leave Get it the to the expert. Stylus and everything. All right. 90s guy out. 90s web guy on Twitter. Whoop. Uh, I guess he was going to answer a page on his beeper. Probably code 1543. What is beeper code 1543? Jason, I think that's, that's just for you and me. You'll have to look it up. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Treehouse Show. For show notes and more, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. And of course, on Twitter, I am at NickRP. And I am at Jay Cypher. And I am at 90sWebGuy. How do you get back there? I don't know. 
This episode was brought to you by Treehouse, the best way to learn how to design and develop for the web and mobile. Be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.